<laughs> so being 17 years old with a, a national record that's crossed over, you know, they want you all over the world, right? all over the country. Or the other way, right? What was the most amazing thing? Uh, after Lord of Esparta, Lord of Esparta, there was no charts like people know now. People have said Lord of Esparta was huge for six months. It seemed like to me it was huge for years, you know what I mean? And the Mailman Blues, which was the other side of the record, it was A and B. And then my next record, O O U, O O U, and I wish the picture was you. Up the charts, whatever. They stopped making charts because of my teenage record. There was no other music, nobody but me. So Mondays through Sundays, wherever I went, you couldn't get the people in. And I was wondering why. And at $50 a night, Frank Pratty asked me to stay another month. The $50 a night went to $100 a night. You know, and I said, something's wrong. I was afraid to tell my parents I had money. <laughs> my father was making $75 a week, you know what I mean? And then he called me in his office and said, there's people want to give you, man, $350 a night. And I'm gonna pay for the band, you know what I mean? I had no idea what this band was talking about. <laughs> so it just it kept going and going and going. And then spectators, I start to, if I went to, said, Charlotte, North Carolina, there was as many white kids there, it was called spectators, as black kids. It depend on who, how many was who that, that played when I played, when I went to town. It was, more white kids there, it became a white dance. And if it was more black kids, it became a black dance. But nobody left. The white kids would be on one side, and the black kids would be on the other. That only lasts for a few minutes. And then everybody started dancing again. There never was no big security and all that stuff like you see now. Kids just was happy being kids dancing to the music. So I did that for about the first 15 months, just killing the country.